Today's video is about one of those skills that separates the good players from the great players. Being able to call out general areas where your opponents have warded in is huge. It can help not only you, but your entire team play around what vision the enemy has. You might even be able to pinpoint the exact location where your enemy has just warded. So smash that like button, destroy the sub button, and let's jump right in. First things first, let's start with one of the most important things that we're gonna cover in the entire video. You don't even need to be in game to be able to do this. You just need to access your hotkey binds and make sure that under the communication section, you have the area is warded ping bound to something. Personally, mine is bound to the tilde key. Having this bound is very important for communicating with your team and just for yourself. It can serve as a reminder to what areas are warded and where you need to stay away from walking. But before we break it down even further, let's go for a two for one, another setting that you need to change. Under interface in the chat section, you need to have show timestamps on. Not having show timestamps on is like not caring carrying a phone or a watch, so you decide to instead count the seconds of every single day on your own. You're just making your life a lot harder for no reason. Show timestamps is so amazingly easy to use. This is useful for a lot of different things, but relating directly back to the area is warded ping, it lets you track enemy wards perfectly. What you need to know to use this properly is how long wards last. Wards from a trinket last a minute and a half to two minutes based on champion level, and regular sight wards from support items last two and a half minutes. Once you have these two settings set and those two timers in your mind, you have all the tools you need to become a vision god. When you're confident that you know your enemy has placed a ward down, hit that area is warded ping. Once that happens, the timestamp goes right in your chat and you can just do a little bit of mental math and figure out exactly when that ward expires. Now that we've talked about the setup and exactly what you're gonna use it for, let's break it down in the actual in-game situation. How do you know exactly where your enemy is warding? Let's start with an obvious scenario. Your opponent walks towards a bush and then briefly, ever so briefly, pauses and then starts walking back to lane and lanes like normal. When their champion pauses and you see them facing that bush directly, that means they just threw a ward in there. Smash that area is warded ping, time it out. When you notice that your teammates are coming towards your lane, you should have already have figured out exactly when the ward has expired and you can ping them away from it or even tell them directly. And at this point, you might be thinking, whoa, wait, calm down, dude. Like you said the ward scale from 90 to 120 seconds. Like how am I supposed to know exactly how long it lasts? I, I don't know that, that's kind of crazy. Well, you have it in your inventory. You can just hover over the trinket in your menu and see exactly how long it lasts, assuming that you're the same level as your opponent. The closer you get to timing those out to right when they expire, the better that you and your team can play. You can leave for roams as soon as the war dies, giving your opponents a false sense of security, or your jungler can come in for a gank. When your opponents have no idea what's going on, the options are endless. You're basically just forcing them to play blindfolded. I mean, granted, sometimes it looks like a lot of people don't even have their monitors turned on, but still, it's a big advantage for you. Either way, to get yourself even more advantages over your opponent, I highly recommend you check out our website, GameLeap.com. Join our website right now during our winter sale it's just $3 a month and we have full refunds if you feel unsatisfied with our product. But we know that you will because we have tons of challenger level videos all waiting for you to help you win your games. Let's talk about the next telltale sign that your opponent has just warded somewhere. If they suddenly disappear from the lane when there's a minion wave meeting in the middle, well, they gotta be leaving to do something, right? Once you see them come back into lane, you should have a pretty solid idea of where they warded based on how long they were gone. A good example of this is in the mid lane. You know, the wave meets in the middle and then suddenly your opponent backs up, goes around the wall, and then a second later pops back out again. They probably warded over the wall in that river bush. But remember, don't stop just there. Hit the area's warded button, and then when you're recalling or when you're walking back to lane, time it out. If you need to, write it in chat. Not everybody has the presence of mind right from the get-go to be able to remember exactly one which ward expires when. Now let's say that you aren't exactly sure where your opponent has warded. Maybe you noticed that they left the lane and went for the honey fruit, and you can tell because they're a bit healthier than they were before, and you aren't exactly sure if they warded while they were on their way in or out. Well, there's a way for you to be able to tell. 
Can you think of anything? Maybe you might be remembering back to our video about how to never die to ganks, but where you stand in your lane is usually where you have warded. And this just makes sense. If you see your opponent leave lane and you're not exactly sure that they warded, but they come back and they try to stick to that side, maybe they always are on the right side trying to harass you from there. They never really go over the other side. Well, you have a pretty good reason to believe that they've warded around that side recently. And this is where things get a little tough because you have to use a little bit of intuition and testing things out with your jungler or the rest of your team who might be roaming. If you think there's vision there, ping it out. Allow somebody on your team to come around the area where they think they might have warded. And if all of a sudden your opponent just backs up to their tower, well, it's definitely warded then because they're just screaming, don't gank me. By the way, that's exactly what your opponents sound like. And when you recognize that they have vision on that side, you can go in there, sweep it out with a sweeping lens, pink wards, or maybe even the vision plant. And then you and your team can try again later because now your opponent is back to playing blind. While we're on the topic, let's talk about the options that you do have as a laner to be able to go around and react to your opponent's vision. You don't just have to wait it out. It's not just about having good wards or destroying enemy wards. There's a lot more to it that you can do other than just adding vision and removing vision. Buying a pink ward or two can really shut down your opponent's vision around their lane. Especially if you're in a winning lane, then your opponent should almost never have the ability to destroy your pink wards. And let's just say that your scenario is exactly that. You are winning the lane and you actually shove your opponent under tower and you have reason to believe that they have a ward around you somewhere. Head around, use their vision plant, or if theirs is not up, use your vision plant to sweep their wards that they have around you. This can open up your jungler, your support, or really anybody to be able to roam and gank your lane. Not only that, but you can use that fog of war to scare the enemy jungler as well. Maybe you even get to invade them. Remember, if you're pushing into the enemy tower, you want to use your lane pressure advantage to be able to secure the vision around you. Go ahead, check for those plants and check for those wards. That's also the best time to place your own pink ward down. And once you do have that down, make sure that you control the area. On top of that, it eliminates certain places that your opponent can ward, which lets you play around their future vision even more. Hopefully at this point, this cascading effect of the vision control and suppression that you have is clear to you. You can keep that up for the rest of the game if you manage to stay in this position. Let's keep talking about more ways to identify when people go for wards. There is almost no reason to leave lane to go ward. And if you make this mistake, you might want to stop doing it too. You might just be missing golden experience that you can get, but if your opponent does decide to leave, they must have had a reason. And that reason was probably to go ward because they were afraid of what happens when they're going to go up in CS. At this point, what you can do in response if you have a pink ward is you can just go throw it down in that bush that you think they warded. And if you did, you don't have to clear the ward. Prioritize getting the minion gold and experience first. Then afterwards, you can go clear the ward. In that moment, the pink ward in that bush is perfectly fine and functions as normal as if your opponent never had a ward in there in the first place. This is an important concept to understand. You don't have to go and clear a ward or place a ward in the exact moment that you notice it's there. It's okay to wait a bit. You need to make sure that you get those guaranteed resources in your lane first. This means not leaving the minion wave and not prioritizing a ward over a minion wave or maybe even tower plates. This is why we covered things in the order that we did. You do not want to immediately go and feel forced like you have to do something about your opponent's vision. You can time it and play around it, and then the very last option after you've done everything else is to remove it. The only time that this changes is when you're talking about objectives like Herald and Dragon. If you happen to notice that somebody who you are trying to gank is playing a little bit odd, and you think that they have a ward down, just sweep it. They might know that you're on that side, but they won't have the security that the ward would have given them for the next X amount of minutes. For most junglers, they can only enter the river in two locations, and if they have mobility or the blast cone, then there's three. But no matter what, junglers always end up heading into the river. Why? Because that's how they can most efficiently gank lanes, and they want the scuttle crabs there. Also, just to be clear, when I say two ways, I mean two ways on one given side of the map. Obviously, it's mirrored, so there's four total. For even more videos on how to control your lane, control and predict your opponent's vision, and dominate your lane, you should absolutely go check out our website, GameLeap.com. So make sure that you don't miss out on our 50% off website sale. We have tens of thousands of members, and we've gotten tons of positive reviews. Our website is the only place where you'll find in-depth courses for the strongest champions for every lane and much, much more. 
there's new challenger content coming out every single day and I've personally created dozens of videos for the site that you won't be able to find anywhere else. Get your annual membership at just $3 per month right now. So don't wait, go ahead and join us. If you made it this far, thanks for watching the whole video. Are you guys ready for patch 10.3? The notes drop on Tuesday and the patch will be this Thursday. I, for one, cannot wait for a Kali nerfs. That's gonna be great. Take control of your games by learning from our exclusive challenger courses that you cannot find anywhere else. Click right here to get started now. As always, my name is Ace Windstorm and I will see you all later.